all right so this is a basic ecg pattern we all know that ecg has uh, this p qrs p wave qrs complex and t wave and sometimes you have an u wave and it is written or inscribed on a paper which has uh, small squares small each small square is 1 mm in breadth and width so it's a 1 mm square box okay and you have five small squares uh, uh, and in the towards upwards and sideways then that constitutes a big square so as i told in the beginning the x axis is basically represents time and y axis represents the voltage so in the x axis each small square this you should remember each small square is 0.04 seconds so always remember in seconds actually because that is the metric we uh, you universally use some people say milliseconds but don't uh, go both you will get confused so 0.04 second is one small square so you have five small squares in a big box so that means a one big box is 0.2 seconds okay so that's it now you have the voltage voltage is one so 1 millivolt is represented by two big boxes okay so that means actually uh, if you take the small boxes 10 boxes upwards is uh, is 1 millivolt okay so you just need to remember so two boxes upwards is 1 millivolt and uh, one big box is 0.2 seconds one small box is 0.04 second all right so we will good so the most important thing about reading an ecg is a systematic approach okay so you have to always go by a systematic approach uh, and especially when you are not in hurry especially uh, if, if of course uh, if it's a uh, arrhythmia if it's a acute coronary syndrome you have to act upon immediately of course you will have to study the ecg uh, later but you have i mean if you may i uh, have to make the diagnosis and immediately act upon but otherwise if you have time always look at the ecg carefully make it a practice to look at in this following way rate you have to see what is the rhythm then axis you look at whether there is hypertrophy and look at whether there is ischemia so the ecg rate is very simple i mean now there are i mean of course computerized ecgs are there you will need to look at the uh, the rate and the uh, columns given but otherwise it's easy to assess the rate the easiest way there are many ways actually you can assess the rate of an ecg but the easiest way is 300 by divided by the number of big boxes between two qrs complexes so when you when we say qrs complexes it is the r wave actually usually you will have a positive r wave in the most of the qrs complexes so you count uh, the big boxes between uh, two co uh, qrs complexes so if there are six big boxes between two r waves that means 300 by 6 that means the r rate is uh, 50 so this is how so so it's very easy so remember rule of 300 it's called rule of 300 now if the it's only applicable when the rate is regular okay when the rate is regular you have to uh, uh, use the rule of 300 now when the rate is regular i'll come to that uh, later but when the rule of regular this rule cannot be applied in atrial fibrillation all right so usually the heart rate falls between 60 to 100 per minute which is the normal sinus rhythm because the sinus that is the rate of the sinus rhythm so when you say the somebody heart rate is between 60 to 100 that means actually is uh, uh, sinus node is functioning normally unless there is a, a heart rate reducing medicine he is taking beta blockers there is no reason that is somebody's heart rate is below 60 or above 100 it should because that is the the intrinsic rhythm of the sinus node is uh, between falls between 60 to 100 okay now heart rate more than 100 is tachycardia heart rate less than 60 is bradycardia we all know now the tachycardia is in general uh, divided into 
two categories based on the duration of the QRS complex. Just, I mean, as of now, we are not analyzing each arrhythmia, but uh, just for your information, this is how we approach even a uh, arrhythmia. That means we just look at the uh, QRS complex, we divide the arrhythmia into a narrow complex uh, tachycardia or a wide complex tachycardia. So, I mean, that's a totally another topic. I mean, uh, sometimes later we can uh, discuss how to approach a tachycardia and uh, differentiate between a uh, arrhythmia, I mean, the uh, wide complex tachycardia and in that itself, uh, how to differentiate between ventricular tachycardia and the other harmless arrhythmias. And so basically, you can categorize the tachycardia in this way as uh, narrow complex and wide complex, as regular and irregular. So this is how you approach an arrhythmia. So th this is a hard, uh, normal ECG. And as we told, actually, I mean, it looks regular. So you can apply the rule of 300. So the big box between the two uh, QRS complexes is there are six boxes. So the heart rate is around 50. Now look at look at the rhythm. Rhythm of the ECG is very important because that changes major majority of the diagnosis. Okay, so the as I told actually the normal sinus rhythm means it originates from the SA node, and there will be there will always be a P wave before every QRS complex. Okay, and P wave will be in the same direction as the QRS. So this is what the normal sinus rhythm means. So there is always a P wave before preceding the QRS complex. So the, when I say like uh, that, I mean, you will definitely remember the when the P wave is not seen, then you call it as atrial fibrillation. That is a, the most common uh, ECG which you will confront without a P wave is the uh, atrial fibrillation. Those, that simply means it's not originating from the SA node. That's It originates from, we now we know, the multiple wavelet theory and it originates from various points on the uh, left or right atria and uh, it, so it cannot produce a P wave simply. And uh, when the P wave is uh, very nearer to or embedded in the QRS complex or uh, just after the QRS complex then we call it as a supraventricular tachycardia SVT. Eh? Okay, so that means actually P wave is the QRS complex is not preceded by uh, the P wave rather P wave is within the QRS or just after the QRS. Again, as I told, it's not originating from the uh, sinus node. Now, another situation is you are not seeing the P wave at all, but the rate is regular. That's again, you cannot call just because the rate is regular because it's, there is no P wave. So we call it as a junctional rhythm. Okay, it's, that simply implies that it's not from the SA node. It may be from the AV node, it may be from the bundle of heads, it may be from the Perkins fibers, but P wave is not there, the QRS is not preceded by a P wave, then you don't call it as a sinus rhythm. Okay, so this is the, uh, so you can look at this uh, ECG, you can see that the, every QRS complex is preceded by a P wave, which is an upright P wave with a uh, normal, I mean, with a regular morphology. The morphology is not changing. The morphology is same in the uh, all the ECGs, all the P waves. So we call it as a regular P wave, I mean, a normal sinus rhythm. And the rate is between, uh, as I told, 60 to 100. Now, analyzing the ECG. Okay. So as I told, actually, we have P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. This is the normal ECG. In between the waves, you have intervals as well as the segments. So segments are the isoelectric portions of the uh, ECG. That means actually it's a, a straight line. It's a horizontal line which has not much fluctuation. So we call it as isoelectric portions. So PR segment is uh, the isoelectric segment which starts just after the P wave and it ends with the uh, origin or beginning of the Q, Q wave or the QRS complex. So the segment, when we consider, it's the isoelectric uh, segment. But when we say interval, PR interval, it includes the P wave. So when you say PR interval, it begins from the origin of the P wave to the uh, origin of the QRS. So that means the difference between an interval and a segment is interval contains a wave. It contains wave as well as the uh, uh, 
the ST, uh, the uh, isoelectric segment. But when you say segment, it's only the isoelectric segment. All right. So normal duration of the PR interval is 0.2 seconds. That means actually uh, it starts from the P wave and it ends with the origin of the uh, origin of the QRS. So that simply means, uh, we. Uh, I hope actually you remember the uh, the point to second is a large box. Okay. So when it crosses a large box, that means there is PR prolongation. And PR prolongation is nothing but the first degree hard block. So this is how you look at the ECG and uh, decide whether there is a hard block or not. So the first degree AB block is prolongation of the PR interval. So that means actually the, the from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the Q wave, you are it's more than one large box. Now the QRS complex again is uh, the normal duration is between 0 0.08 to 0 0.1 second. So that means actually it should uh, it should be confined to less than almost half of the uh, a big box or just two or two and a half. Uh, small squares. Each small square is 0 0.04, so you can have just two, two and a half small squares. That and uh, the all QRS complex should be uh, inscribed within that uh, three boxes, three small boxes. When it goes beyond that, that means actually the QRS has widened. Okay, so we all know that the, the widened QRS is uh, is the uh, what we call the bundle branch block. Now, the QT interval is something which is very confusing for many of the people. So, QT interval as uh, is uh, the first thing we should remember is QT interval represents the repolarization of the heart. That's where its importance comes. And it has, it varies from person to person. It varies according to the various uh, other physical and the, uh, the uh, electrolyte changes and uh, physiological conditions, it changes. According to the heart rate, it changes. So, you have to have a corrected Q, uh, QT interval. So, the correction is done by, I mean, Bessette's formula that is a QT by root of RR interval. I mean, you need not go into, but roughly you can remember that in men, the QT interval can go up to maximum 440 milliseconds. And uh, the uh, uh, in females, it can go maximum up to 460 milliseconds okay so this is uh, or you can i mean uh, put it in the uh, uh, i mean in the uh, seconds 0 0.4 uh, 4 or 0 0.46 seconds so this is this varies so we will uh, come to the importance of qt interval so the uh, in general prolonged qt is seen in uh, conditions where you have some uh, drug effects or some electrolytes effects like the commonest uh, one we see is the hypokalemia. Hypokalemia and hypocalcemia is uh, one of the commonest situation. Then you can see get uh, prolongation of QT interval in when there is ischemia, when myocardial infarction is there. Then you have the congenital long QT syndromes are there. Increased intracranial pressure, you can have a, a prolongation of QT interval. So uh, this is... Uh, is important when you analyze the ECG, but I mean, you need not, even if you uh, miss this, I mean, you, it's okay, fine. So, the other important thing when you look at an ECG is the AV blocks, okay? So, AV blocks are very easy to uh, recognize. It's not something very difficult if you know what to look for. So, as we discussed, actually, when there is a PR interval prolongation, is the first degree AV block. So when we say AV block, you should always remember what is AV block. Atri AV block is atrioventricular block. Okay, so it, that simply means actually the impulses conducted to the AV node. The impulses conduction up to the AV node happens without any blocks because it's the internodal pathway and from the SA node it reaches AV node very fast. Now from the AV, the AV node you have the bundle of his and it has to travel down the bundle of keys to, uh, to uh, the fascicles, uh, to the uh, bundle branches, right bundle branch and the left bundle branch. So, and it should reach the uh, Perkins fibers and it should reflect in the ECG. So, the QRS complex is basically the depolarization of the ventricle. Okay, the depolarization. So, you have any delay in any of this conduction can 
prolong the AV interval and it can create the uh, AV block, atrioventricular block. So it all happens below the AV node. Okay. So in the ECG, when there is a mild delay, what you get is the PR prolongation. The first thing you get is the PR prolongation. So any PR prolongation, so now we know actually how to look at the PR prolongation. If the from the beginning of the PR interval to the beginning of the QRS uh, complex, if it's more than one block, uh, one large blocks uh, or 0.2 second, it's the first degree AV block. Okay. Usually, I mean, uh, we can go up to 0.24 is considered to be okay. But anything more than 0.24, is, we have to act upon. We have to look at whether there is any beta blockers or what causes the uh, PR prolongation. Now, second degree AV block is uh, divided into two types. Basically, the MOBIT is type 1 and type 2. Uh, so, the type 1 is, there is a gradual prolongation of the PR interval. Then, a QRS is dropped. We will see the ECG uh, examples and you will get the what it is. And the second degree, MOBIT type 2 is, PR interval is fixed. There is no prolongation of the PR interval, but a QRS is dropped randomly. Okay. Now, type 3 block is, there is no relation between PR and the QRS. That means the P wave beats in a different rhythm and the QRS beats in a different rhythm.